Hello and welcome to Sports Fan Entertainment. 32 teams, 32 days, and today we're talking about the New York Jets, a team that has had a very interesting offseason, including a general manager being fired, hiring a new general manager, a new head coach being brought in, the head coach wanting power issues. We're still developing this quarterback. It's been very interesting. New uniforms as well. But what will be the end result here for the New York Jets in 2019? We're going to talk about it today. We're going to start by talking about their strengths. We're going to start by talking about their defensive line. What a defensive line in New York. I mean, it starts with Leonard Williams. That's where the transformation of this defensive line began for the New York Jets in that 2015 NFL draft. He has been a consistently good player for this New York Jets football team. We're expecting more of the same from him. Steve McLendon there at nose tackle position, one of the better nose tackles in the NFL. Henry Anderson, don't forget about him, people. He is incredible defensive line depth. A guy that had seven sacks last year, a great acquisition from the Indianapolis Colts in that draft trade from about a year ago. He was absolutely fantastic for the Jets last season. And then, of course, we're adding in now Quinnen Williams, the defensive tackle out of Alabama. I mean, you are talking about one hell of a defensive line. When you talk about those four guys, they're going to absolutely wreak havoc for opposing offensive lines in the NFL and man it must be absolutely brutal watching this defensive line tear up this Jets offensive line in practice and training camp day after day. We move on to the next strength for this football team and we have this safety position yet again the Jets laid the seeds for the transformation of the safety position they did it here though in the 2017 NFL draft drafting Jamal Adams in the first round drafting Marcus May in the second some people questioned it at that time but you see one hell of a safety duo now Jamal Adams he burst onto the scene we always knew he was going to be a beast rookie year wasn't great second year you saw so much and now man he's going to absolutely pop off he already has popped off but really solidify himself as one of if not the best strong safety in the entire nfl i'm expecting huge things from jamal adams i was a huge jamal adams fan coming out of college it is nice to see it coming to fruition now gotta love the safeties in the defensive line in new york we move on though to the weaknesses and we have to start to me with the wide receivers. Look, Jets fans, they're just not good. Okay, we just, we have to face facts. I know it's not easy, but we have to face facts. Okay, let's throw at Robbie Anderson. Okay, he's okay. He's okay, but he's not a number one wide receiver in this league. He's not. He had an opportunity to prove it last season with this quarterback. And you can blame the previous offensive regime. The coaching wasn't great. We all know that. But come on, man, only about 750 receiving yards, never had a 1,000-yard season at this point. He's a guy that can be a big play guy, just not a consistent number one receiver. A nice piece, not a number one receiver. And there's no number one receiver on this roster. You just have a bunch of okay guys. And Jamison Crowder, look, I know he's an okay addition, but he's not a great addition. This is a guy that, look, Kirk Cousins was slinging the ball in Washington. He was looking for a big-time receiver to really take the bulk of his yards, and no one really did that, including Jamison Crowder. He really should have popped off in that 2017 season. Did not. 2018 got injured. It's been nothing but meh from Jamison Crowder. And if he was a good receiver, the Redskins would have kept him a point blank and simple because the Redskins are still looking for a wide receiver over there. So if Crowder was that, they would have kept him, and they didn't because he did not prove to be that during his time. And Quincy and Nunwa, I thought he was going to return last season to have a big impact. He just didn't. The wide receivers, they're okay. They're not bad. They're not bad players, but none of them are solidifying themselves as a number one wide receiver in this league. I don't look at any one of them and say, okay, that's a really good receiver. I look at Robbie Anderson and I say, he's good. And I look at a noon wall and I look at Jameson Crowder and I say, they're okay. But it wouldn't shock me if either one was out of the league in a couple of years. Do not like the wide receivers in New York. And I don't like the tight end position. Now, so shockingly for me, Chris Herndon burst onto the scene. And this was shocking for everyone. You know, this was an undrafted free agent produced more last season than he did any singular season in college. That's great. Four game suspension now for Chris Herndon. So that takes him out for four games. And I don't like Ryan Griffin. I don't like Eric Tomlinson. So now we have a problem to get in the tight end position. When Chris Herndon comes back, we're going to get 12 good games from the starting tight end. But I don't like the backup tight ends either for those 12 games. So I think the tight end position is a weakness for this team. 
And again, and I aforementioned this, at least I hinted to this earlier, the offensive line is a weakness for this New York Jets team as well. Now, they're trying to fix that. They called up Ryan Khalil from his couch. They brought him in. They signed him for the center position. Okay, but Ryan Khalil has not been a good center in this league for a couple of years. So that's not going to change my opinion about anything there. Kelvin Beecham at left tackle, eh. Brian Winters, eh, you just traded for Alex Lewis. Trust me, he's not a good guard in this league, okay? Don't even buy that for a second. Brandon Shell, he might be your best offensive lineman at this point, and he's not a good offensive lineman in his own right. So I expect more absolute bad offensive line play, quite honestly, in New York, and that's a shame because you have this budding quarterback, you have this promising quarterback, and you now have a new shining running back, and they're not going to get the holes that they deserve playing behind this offensive line. With that said, we move on to my X Factor this season for the New York Jets, and it has to be the quarterback position. Now, I like Sam Darnold, okay? I had him ranked over Baker Mayfield, although I had Mayfield ranked very high. I had them both ranked very high. I thought they were gonna be future Pro Bowl quarterbacks. One right now is very better than the other. One right now is exactly where I thought he was gonna be, and Sam Darnold is not. Now, I think he's going to take a step forward this upcoming season. But again, he is the next factor because the guy had 15 interceptions in 13 games last season. That's way too high. had a number of fumbles as well. The turnovers will have to go down for Donald. I think they will, but he is definitely an X factor for sure. With that, so we move on to my statistical projections for the New York Jets. So we begin with quarterback Sam Donald. 3,900 passing yards, 24 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, and an 87.0 passer rating. So, no, he will not, you know, begin to challenge Baker Mayfield for the right to call himself the best quarterback of the 2018 NFL Draft. But he will begin to solidify himself as a starting quarterback and a franchise quarterback in this league. And I think he starts to prove that. I did not see enough of that last season from him. Although I know, again, the offensive coaching staff last year was absolutely god-awful. Trust me, I understand. The personnel ain't that much better. All right, look at the running back position, Le'Veon Bell. 260 carries, 1,100 yards, and seven touchdowns. It's good. My thing is, though, don't think Le'Veon Bell is going to come into this franchise and change everything, okay? Le'Veon Bell behind a very impressive Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line, playing with very talented wide receivers, and playing with a very talented and feared quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, never topped 1,200 yards. Never topped five yards a carry. That's one reason I feel like the Jets really overpaid for Le'Veon Bell. I wouldn't have signed Le'Veon Bell that contract knowing what he did for that team. What's he going to do now that we have bad receivers, in my estimation, and a bad offensive line, and a quarterback that no one fears yet? I think he's going to be fine. Hell, these stats are good. They're not going to be great stats for Le'Veon Bell. Adjust your fantasy mock drafts accordingly. All right, we look at wide receiver Robbie Anderson. 60 catches, 800 yards, and five touchdowns. More eh and meh from Robbie Anderson. I do think he will lead the pack over Jamison Crowder and Quincy Inunua. But I think it's going to be more meh stats out of the Jets wide receiver core, which again, I think is one of the worst in the league. With that, to so move on to my bold predictions for this upcoming Jets season. The Jets will have a top half defense in this league. I think it could even break top 10. Now, it just depends on the turnovers on the other side of the football. I will say this. I think the Jets will be in the top 10 in terms of yards allowed, and that is the most metric that people use. Scoring defense, we'll have to see because they still lack people that can turn the ball over consistently, and the pass rush isn't there either to force those turnovers. But I think they should even get top 10 in terms of yards allowed. I think they're going to be a very strong defense this upcoming season and really only a couple of pieces away from being an elite defense. You can see this team begin to look like the Chicago Bears over in the NFC quite soon. We look at the next bowl prediction. We have the Jets defeating the Patriots once this year. I think they get it done. I think Sam Darnold, Le'Veon Bell in this defense will beat the Patriots once this year, only once. Okay, but I think it'll be very significant and nice step forward for this football team. And bold prediction number three, the Jets will post a winning record even beyond week eight this season, but will collapse at the end and miss the playoffs. And I think the Jets might lose their last three football games. I think they could be seven and six heading into week 15, losing Baltimore, lose at home to the Pittsburgh Steelers, and lose at the Buffalo Bills. In fact, that's what I'm going to predict today, that that will be the case. 
and it will be very unfortunate because a lot of Jets fans will think, hey, we could win out and make the playoffs, and then you'll lose each and every game. Um, and with that, so let's go ahead and move on to my win-loss prediction, although I've already spoiled it. Best case scenario, 9-7. I don't think it's 10-6. and six. I just, I'm just not buying it. Um, again, the tight end position, the offensive line, the wide receivers, this is just not there for me. And I know Andy, I know Adam Gates can do a lot with little, but I don't think he can do enough to make this a 10-win team. Even best case scenario, I just don't see a 10-win team unless we really transform Sam Darnold into like Andrew Luck or something, which, okay, I'll give you a 2% chance, but I'm not going to account for that in these predictions today. Worst case scenario, 5-11. and 11. For some reason, the Adam Gates thing blows up. Sam Donald is the same as he was last year. Le'Veon Bell really can't do anything behind this offensive line, and they have problems. But my prediction is 7-9, and nine, and I think that that's fair. You know, I probably right now with the Jets, I, I just don't know why I should just afford them wins over teams like the Raiders. And I, I have them better than the Raiders, but let, let's say three or four more wins than the Raiders, three or four more wins than the Bengals, two or three more wins than the Broncos. Why should I do that? Why should I have them next to the Tennessee Titans, next to the Houston Texans, next to, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Chargers? I, they're not at that level to me yet. I do think they're in the middle of the AFC, and I think that's a big step forward than they were and they were last season. I don't think, I think they'll be around the playoff picture, right? They were like the Baltimore Ravens and the Denver Broncos, but I just can't push them there. I, I don't think they're better than the Titans and the Texans or the Chiefs and the Charters that to me will be fighting for those final wildcard spots. And I think they're a one or two game leap away from being in that discussion and conversation. So with that said, those are my thoughts on the New York Jets. What are your thoughts? Comment down below. I want to know. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, to subscribe. And until next time, this has been MJ of Sports Fan Entertainment. And I'm out. See you all later.